Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to this week's episode of Advanced Bass Fishing and really appreciate you guys coming by the channel and spending some time with me today. And uh, all you guys that have been with the channel very long, you know that these are longer videos than my normal uh, videos I put out on my other channel. So I really appreciate the commitment that it takes that extra time to watch them. I know everybody's busy out there, so much appreciated you guys uh, checking the video out today. And guys, today we've got a little bit of a different video. We're going to have a wide ranging discussion. I just want to talk to you about some things that come to the top of my mind that are going to help accelerate your success as an angler. A lot of, a lot of things we're going to talk about today that you don't hear ever people talking about. And they're things that I have figured out over the course of my 50 years fishing that have really allowed me to, to grow my success at big leaps and bounds instead of just at a snail's pace. So we're going to get that in today's video. And one of the things about bass fishing, guys, you hear me talk about it a lot. Bass fishing is the most difficult sport that there is by far. There's there's an endless amount of variables to it, controlled variables and uncontrolled variables. And um, you're dealing with a bass. It's not like a football or a baseball. And so there's a lot of you know stuff that doesn't play by the rules with it. And you're never going to master this sport. I don't care how good you are. You know, you could spend a, you could spend 70 years fishing, and at the end of that 70 years, you you're going to be left with not no, with knowing less than what you think you do as far as after you fished and seen how think bass react and how they do stuff they shouldn't do and how they do stuff they should do sometimes. Um, pretty, it's just it's just a awesome sport because it's frustrating, it's exhilarating, it's exciting, it can be boring. It, you know, it's. It challenges every aspect of your being. So we're gonna have sort of a, a good conversation on that. So on this conversation, it's gonna be boring just watching me talk. So if you guys are driving down the road, you know, just click the video on, you can listen to it and probably get just as much out of it. And also guys, just our quick uh, weekly housekeeping tips here to keep the lights on and keep the videos up on the YouTube here. If you guys like the content here we're putting out on advanced bass fishing, um, the best way that you can support this channel by far is just go to my links, my description, into my description and click on my tackle warehouse link and bookmark that link. And anytime you need to purchase fishing tackle, if you use my personal link, the channel gets a small uh, commission off the sales. So if you guys want to give back to the channel, just use and bookmark that tackle warehouse link moving forward. Uh, along with my other links I put in there and you guys are doing a, a big help to me and my family and helps uh, keep the channel here on YouTube. So much appreciated. Okay, guys, I sort of want to just go over through this. I'll, the goal on this video is I want you to come through it with some bits and pieces of information that's going to help your fishing beyond just me telling you, you know, you need to use this in June or you need to use this color of crankbait or you need to use this color jig. I want to talk about a little bit more um, obscure things that's going to help you out more than anything. So one of the things you're going to find out about bass fishing is you go through stages at, throughout your life as far as the, the, the uh, level that you are as an angler. And each one of those stages is really critical to the development of your overall success out there. So I sort of want to get into that a little bit. The first stage that you're going to go through is the most difficult stage in bass fishing. And that's when you're actually trying to master and learn the basics. The basics of casting, the basics of understanding what lures do and what type of lure categories they are, um, understanding a little bit about the bass, where to look for them at. The foundational basic one-on-one -on -one elements of bass fishing are the most, it's the slowest and it's most time consuming and it's the most difficult part of the sport because it's new, you don't have a lot of experience at it. And even though you can watch YouTube videos and you can get a lot of information, you know, from social media and on YouTube, you can't ever, you can't ever take that information that you get like from me or anyone else on YouTube and go out on the lake and immediately to expect to have success doing that. Now, if you're more of a, if you're more of a skilled angler and you've been doing it for a long time, yeah, you might be able to take some tips and advice and go apply them immediately. But more, more than not, the information that you gather, you know, early on in the stage of your career, it's going to have to require you to have on the water time in order to fully assimilate and fully understand that. So when you're learning guys, just be patient because one of the most frustrating things that every angler is going to go through is you want 
you want to catch fish and you want to go out there and every time that you go out there you want to get bit and you want to you know have a good time catching fish everybody does but one of the things that you have to do when you're learning about an angler is you have to be be kind to yourself and be patient to yourself that this is not an easy sport it's like it may seem easy you may watch some youtube videos or television shows on fishing and they make it look easy but guys, if you fish a public body of water and you don't fish public, you know, private ponds and strip pits and private lakes like a lot of the te television personalities do, it's always a grind out there. It's always a struggle to catch them. It's like the days that you go out and you just catch a bunch of fish are few and far between. Guys, I've been doing this for over 50 years and I spend, I have I don't know how many tens of thousands of days I've spent on the water fishing all over the world. And almost every time that I go fishing out there, it's not easy. As much as I know about fishing and the lakes I've been to, yeah, you can have good successful days on the water, but most of the time um, you're going to have days out there where you're unsuccessful a lot more of the time than you are successful. So that's sort of, that's sort of like something you need to expect a little bit with that. So one of the things that can really help you when you're developing that is, like I said, tr you try to, you, you, there's two different worlds out there. One is the world of assimilating information, so especially here through YouTube, and the next is applying it. You have to try to get out there and spend as much time on the water as you possibly can. Now, when you're out there on the water, it really helps if you can go fishing with somebody that knows what they're doing, so they can show you firsthand with that. And once you, once you, begin this process of fishing with some people that know what they're doing and assimilating information and then going fishing yourself a lot of times. The next st stage that comes with that is developing your own style as an angler. Because one of the things that you'll find out about bass fishing, and this is one of the things that I really struggled with for years, is your creativity and your imagination is literally more important than your experience out there. Now, don't get me wrong, experience is valuable, but when it comes to truly accelerating your success and coming into your own as a bass angler, you have to realize that every single person out there has their own unique, creative, and imaginative ideas to try and fishing. And just because you've never read about it or just because you've never heard about it doesn't mean you, you shouldn't try it. If you've got something you think might work, give it a try. You just never know. I can't tell you guys how many times that I have fished with people that don't know anything about fishing and they tie on a lure or a color out of the back of my boat. And I'm just saying to myself, they're never going to catch a fish on that. And they wind up catching a bunch of fish on it. So as long as I've been fishing with it, I, I have, I have, um, mental limitations on what I think is going to work that causes me not to catch as many fish as what I probably should have. So one of the most, um, uh, I guess one of the most uh, soothing things that you can remember as an angler, or the one of the most reassuring things that you can tell yourself is that every single one of us has, like I said, unique creative abilities that are just our own. Nobody else has it. So remember that and capitalize on that. It's like, say for example, if you and I go out fishing together and there's a big old long, line long of rocky banks in front of us. We can, we're going to fish this big long line of rocky banks. <clears throat> I have one way that I probably am going to approach that based upon, you know, the water clarity and water temperature and all that type of stuff. And, that, and I may have something in my mind how I think I'm going to catch fish there, but you may go to that same bank and you may have a completely different theory. You may, I may want to fish a moving bait and you think a slow bait is going to work better. I may want to fish a black and blue bait, and you may, may want to fish a watermelon colored. So any given day, one of those approaches may work better than the other. It's like, you could go out with Kevin Van Dam the same way. It's like, you, say for example, if you're a beginning bass angler and, you, and you're out with Kevin Van Dam fishing that rocky bank I just told you about, on any day, on any given day, an amateur angler can beat Kevin on that same bank if they happen to key in on something that the fish just want better than the other angler that particular day. So the point of what I'm talking about here is remember that and use that as like your strength. And that is your foundation is being creative and trying stuff that maybe just comes to the forefront of your mind. It's gonna really gonna be a, a big benefit with that. 
The next thing that you can do to really accelerate this, guys, is, is aside from the time on the water that you spend, you have got to be able to be a skilled caster. And this is one of the things that I think gets overlooked more than anything out there. I think a lot of people do not put the emphasis on that. But if you fish traditional bass fishing techniques where you're fishing boat docks and grass beds and lay down trees and rocky banks and stuff like that that most people fish, your ability to put that bait exactly where you want that bait has everything to do with how many fish that you're gonna catch. If you are a poor caster and you're, you're, you just simply you know, if you, if you if you try to cast next to a stump or something and maybe one out of every 25 casts, you actually get it close enough to that stump where a fish could hit it versus somebody that can put it right there where they want to next to that stump every single cast, you're going to catch a fraction of the fish as the good caster. If you're a poor caster, even if you know much, uh, know a lot more, it's like you can know everything about, you, you could be a bass angler that has been fishing for 50 years and you know everything about fishing and you can go up against somebody that's never caught a bass in their life and i could tell you guys okay the 50 year old guy that's got 50 years experience throw that spinner bait right next to that stump and if if they can't throw that spinner bait next to that stump where it needs to be the angler that has never caught a bass before but maybe a, a great caster and also i throw that spinner bait next to that stump and he flings it out there two inches away from that stump and has never caught a fish before he's going to outfish the seasoned angler never ever overlook the critical aspect of being a good caster and when i'm talking about being a good caster i don't mean just casting your lure i'm talking about you got to learn how to cast with a spinning rod with a bait cast rod, with different lengths of rod, with different actions of rod, different type of cast. You got underhand cast, you got sidearm cast, you got pitching and flipping, you got skipping, you got, you know, slow roll, you got overhead cast, you got one handed cast, you got two handed cast, all based upon the technique and the lure that you're using. So if you can master that casting technique to where you can put that bait where you want it, in correlation with um, your growing knowledge of bass behavior and bass movement, your skills as an angler are going to accelerate through the roof by that. And that leads us into the next topic, which is bass movement and seasonal behavior. So I'm gonna take a quick drink here. I'll be right back and we'll get into that. Okay guys, let's get into bass movement and seasonal behavior, which is the least popular topic in bass fishing. So. If you're one of those guys that you just heard me talk about bass movement and bass behavior and personality, and you find yourself starting to tune out a little bit, please do not tune out. Because if you guys have seen many of the videos I've done on intuitive angling, I always talk about this, about how when I do bass movement, bass behavior videos and seasonal patterns, nobody watches it. And that is the biggest mistake that you can possibly make. If you could do one thing for yourself that would improve your bass angling more than anything else, go on YouTube and try to find everything you can about seasonal patterns and movements and mood and personality of bass. There is nothing that's going to help you more as an angler more, yet there is nothing that bass anglers that are learning want to hear about. They don't want to hear about it. They want to hear about the best rod and reel. They want to hear about the best color or lure or whatever like that. But I wanna, I wanna get into this a little bit without having the seminar about bass movement behavior. I wanna talk about the need to do that. There's a saying in bass fishing, if you've seen it you know, very long, that 90% of the fish live in 10% of the water on any lake, that's pretty true. And if you're going to consistently catch bass and you're gonna go out where you can go out any month of the year and catch some fish, you have got to know where those fish live at. And the only way that you know where those fish live at are through an understanding of seasonal patterns and movements of bass. And you don't want to ever be one of those anglers that relies on everybody else to tell you where to fish at. That's never going to benefit you whatsoever. So if you're one of those anglers out there that have to call buddies before they go fishing or look at fishing reports and have somebody sort of hold their hand a little bit before they get on the lake, you're never going to be a good angler out there. You've got to develop those skills that gives you the confidence in yourself to go out and find that. And the way that you do that is understanding bass movement and behavior, mood and personality. Now, the thing that determines this, a lot of different factors with that. You've got a lot of it depends on what part of the lake you're in. I mean, the, the, the part of the country you're in. 
as far as the type of lake that you're fishing because bass in a man-made reservoir act differently than bass in a natural reservoir. Bass in a river relate to cover different than bass in a lake. Bass in a tidal river relate to different than bass in a non-tidal river. So there's a lot of variables with that. And um, the next thing with that is you have to understand how the time of the year affects mood and personality and the bass behavior. Because a lot of people think that um, bass react and they change their mood and personality by water temperature only. And there is some truth to that, but that's not all the truth out there. There's a lot of factors that determine how bass bite a lure or which lures they want or techniques that they want. And in my opinion, out of all the experience that I've had in fishing guys, I can tell you that the time of the year that has, it has everything to do with the amount of daylight hours or, you know, the amount of darkness out there. Because, you know, for say for example, we're in almost June right now, this is the longest daylight hours of the year. That affects the mood and the personality of the fish. And the same in January when you have the shortest daylight hours, that the fish react differently with, with that. And you're going to notice that a lot. You're going to notice how fish prefer certain areas and certain techniques based upon those daylight hours in correlation with the water visibility, the water level, and the water temperature. All those factors together, the daylight hours, the angle of the sun, because the sun is a lot farther in the southern sky during the winter time of the year, so the it's more vertical in the summer. All of those factors together, water temperature, water level, water clarity, time of day, sunlight angle, all that plays a role on where those fish are gonna be at. And there's not one shoe that fits all. I can't sit here and tell you that, you know, if you tell me, okay, Randy, tell me how to fish, catch fish in first week of August. There's a lot more to it than that because every lake, like I said, is unique to its own. Every lake has different type of structure. Every lake has a different type of water clarity, a different type of water tint, different type of available cover for the fish to fit, to, to be on, different type of current flows. Everything is different with that. But what you're gonna find on that is once you do get this basic understanding of the mood and personality of fish, you can apply that to almost any lake out there because here's what has happened in my own fishing. This is what the metamorphosis has taken place. When I first started out fishing, I didn't know anything about fishing hardly. Even even when I made my first Bassmaster Classic in 1986, I, I look back and I didn't know anything hardly about fishing then compared to what I know now. And even though when I was at the top of my game as a pro angler back in the early 2000s, even though I was more successful in tournaments then than I am now, I still know more about bass fishing now than I did back when I was at the top of my game you know, just age sort of has a role with that. But the main thing that I can tell you with it, if you guys, if you will get to a point in your fishing where some, if somebody tells you, okay, here's the water temperature, here's the water clarity, here's the water visibility, and here's the cover you have in the lake. If you know those four things there, you, you know automatically what to, how to fish and where to fish at. Uh, you, you can drop me down, guys. You could take me on a helicopter or whatever, and you could drop me down in a bass boat in the middle of a lake that I've never seen before, I don't know anything about, and give me those four things. You give me the water clarity, the water temperature, the available cover, water level, all that type of stuff, and I'll find the fish. I, I'll be able to, I'll, I'll know what to tie on, I'll know the areas to look for, and that is something that comes from decades of experience on understanding seasonal movements and patterns of fish. So, don't don't ever get burned out on that or don't ever lose interest in that because once you become a student of that, your success rate on the water is going, your, the consistency of the good trips that you have or the trips that you catch, catch fish more often than not are gonna go up so much further than if you just don't know anything about that. I mean, if you're one of those guys out there that tries to rely on other people's information and trying to find the best lure color to catch fish, your success as an angler is going to grow, like I said, at a snail's pace. But if you're one of those anglers that puts time and effort into seasonal movements and patterns, you're going to get good really, really quick. So 
Okay, we'll be right back, guys. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be back with the final topic here. Okay, guys, the last thing I want to talk about are two different things. I want to talk about the importance of organization and the importance of the mental side of fishing. Again, you know, just as important as everything else. <clears throat> now, one of the things I can tell you about bass fishing, especially on any level out there, is the people that are disciplined and organized are always more successful. I, I've looked back at some of the best fishermen that I've ever seen in my life that have a lot of natural ability, but they don't have everything else that go with it. They don't have the organizational skills and the discipline to take advantage of those natural talents. But I have seen people that are not very naturally talented as anglers, but they have the discipline to want to work and get better, and they have the organization. In fishing, <clears throat> one of the main things that you're going to find out is that you have got to take control of the controlled variables because there are more uncontrolled variables in bass fishing that you have no control over than the ones you have control over. And the ones that you have control over, you have got to capitalize on that. And organization of your equipment is number one. It will behoove you and it will benefit you tremendously if you take the time to organize your tackle to a fine tooth comb. It's like, you can see the wall behind me guys, I've got all my hard baits up here. They're all labeled. Everything's out there. I know where they're at. I got my soft baits, you know, underneath it right there. Everything's labeled. I know what's there. Got, you know, different type of lure categories hanging over here. Everything is neat and organized and I know where it's at. And it's the same in my boat. It's like when I pack my boat, I make sure everything is neat and organized. Now, there's an obvious reason to that. It's like, yeah, you're going to be more efficient. If it's if, if I say, okay, I want to go jerkbait fishing today and I want a shad pattern jerkbait, I know what box to pull it out of. So yeah, it's going to save me time, but you can't discount what organization does to your mental clarity because if you're organized, it frees your mind up mentally a lot more than if you're cluttered and disorganized. I, I've been around several anglers that are really, really good and you get into their boat and they don't even know where anything's at. It's like, you know, their hooks are rusted. They got this and that laying everywhere. They got mold growing in their boat. They've never been in there. And they undermine their own success through that lack of organization. So this is a simple fix that can really accelerate. If you got the time to do it, just spend a little bit of time every day. You can, you can literally allocate 10 or 15 minutes a day, every single day, and go mess with your tackle. You know, get you some boxes, get them organized, put some stuff where you know where it's at. It's not only good, and it's not, not, not only will make you more efficient, but it's, it's enjoyable. Because I think there's a big, there's something to be said for handling your tackle. And this is one of those things we'll get into, I'm gonna get into the mental part of fishing here. One of the things that I have noticed in my fishing is like, if I physically touch and handle every bait that I have, it's almost like you sort of develop some type of a connection with that lure. It's hard to explain what that is, but I want to be able to be hands-on with everything. And having that type of organization allows me to do that. Now, that gets into the mental part of the fishing here. Now, one of the things that you're gonna find out about bass fishing, there is a tremendous amount of mystery involved in it, as far as the mental side of it. And let me give you guys a prime example. I got a prime story here about, you've heard of people, bass anglers, that get on rolls and get on slumps. You know, we've all seen it. Some guy just says, man, I just am in a slump. I just can't catch him. And then somebody else will say, man, he's on a roll right now. He just can't do anything wrong. When you're on a roll or when, you, when you're on a slump, you're no better or no worse than you were in the opposite situation. If, you, if you're a seasoned bass angler, you're going to go through slumps. But even in your worst slump, you're still as good as you were during the hottest period of your fishing. There's just some variables that come involved there that create that slump and create that, you know, the uh, rolls that you get on. And I remember Rick Clun told me a story one time. I've told this a few times before, but it's, it, it illustrates perfectly. <clears throat> His uh, stepbrother, Randy Fight, was a top level touring pro back in the early 80s, late 70s and early 80s, <clears throat> talented angler. He won a couple Bassmaster tournaments. And Rick told me that he was one of the most talented anglers he ever fished with, except that he had this mental block that every time he was doing good in a tournament, 
he didn't expect it to stay. He expected to have a bad day. That was just his expect, ex expectation because it happened more often than not. And Rick was telling me that there was they were fishing this tournament in Florida down there. And both Randy and Rick were doing really good in the tournament. It was the last day of the tournament. Randy was leading the tournament. And I think Rick was in third or fourth place. And they were both fishing the same area, fishing this big grass bed or something out there. And they could see each other the whole tournament. <clears throat> so anyway, the last day of the tournament, um, and Randy, Rick told me that Randy had been telling me, that, you know, telling him throughout the course of the week, he goes, he, he kept saying, man, I just don't think those fish are going to hold up. I think something's going to happen to him. So just almost like he's setting himself up for, for failure. And the last day of the tournament, they get out there and Rick was saying, yeah, we got out there and it's like, they're biting like crazy. It's like, that they were biting better than they have all week. And I, he goes, I got a big limit in the boat. And about, he goes, about 11 o'clock in the morning, I went over to talk to Randy. And he goes, I go, how many, how many you got? And he goes, I hadn't had a bite yet. And he, Rick goes, what are you talking about? You hadn't had a bite. These fish are biting better than they have all week. And he zeroed that day. After, you know, Rick right next to him is just catching them right and left. And Rick was convinced, he told me, that he was convinced that the fish could pick up on Randy's negative energy, which translated into the fish not biting, you know, for whatever reason. Now you can believe it or you believe it or not, it's up to you, but that's coming from Rick Klun. So I have seen the same thing. I, I mean, I have seen situations in my own career and the anglers that I have also observed that when they have a bad tournament, like they say, for example, they run into something like they blow their motor or they lose a bunch of big ones and they just have a bad tournament, you can pretty much guarantee that they're going to have a run of bad tournaments after that. There's something that sticks with you. And if you have a good tournament and you're catching big ones and you're doing good in tournaments, a lot of times that carries over to two or three ever tournaments. I've seen it myself in my own fishing. So there's an aspect, there's a mysterious magical aspect that we don't understand. But anyway, when you're fishing, as far as here's some things that you can do to help yourself out mentally. First thing that you have to tell yourself which is true is that there's no such thing as the fishing being tough or the fish just aren't biting. The fish are biting all the time. They're looking to, to eat all the time. They're looking to attack prey all the time. You have to absorb that and you have to remind yourself all the time because it doesn't matter how tough the fishing is, somebody is always going to catch them. So tell yourself that over and over and over again that the fish are biting, I just have to figure them out. And that is the that is the key right there. It's like, you have got to tell yourself, it's just a matter of time until I figure these fish out. So one of the exercises that I do in my own fishing, when I go out in the morning, I always tell myself, it's like Randy, he goes, you're gonna catch them today. It's just, you don't know when you're gonna catch them. It could be the first 10 minutes. It could be the last 10 minutes of the tournament. You're gonna find them. You're going to figure them out. It's coming. I tell myself this over and over again. And throughout the course of the day, <clears throat> if I um, maybe need a little bit more fish, say, for example, I'm struggling and I need to catch one more fish, you know, to make a check, I think, in the tournament, I visualize to myself me catching that fish. And I'll give you guys another example here. And this has happened many times, many times throughout the course of my career. We were, I was fishing a tournament at Kentucky Lake and I was fishing about 80 miles down the lake. And I was, I was in, I was right on the bubble for making a check going into the last day of the tournament, top 40. I think I was in 37th place or something like that. And I ran down 80 miles fishing down there and I got, there's five fish limit. I got four fish in the boat and I've got, I'm out of time. And I, and I, I figured that if I run back right now, I might have five or 10 minutes to fish by the way in somewhere. So anyway, I started running back and the entire time that I was running for 80 miles, I pictured myself, I knew, I knew right where I was gonna go to. I knew this little riprap point that I caught a couple of fish off in the past couple of years. You know, I caught them there before, right by the way in. And I pictured myself going up to that point and throwing a shaky head over there and working it down that rocky point and catching my fifth fish and making a check. Guys, I thought about that and I, and I breathed and I, and I like it took a deep breath and I, and I imagined what it would feel like to put that fifth fish in the live well and then go to the weigh-in 
and make a good check in the tournament. I, that's all I thought about was how that would feel. And I tried to, to get into that feeling, how satisfying that would be for them to hand me this $10,000 check for catching that fifth fish. I played it over and over and over in my mind. So I ran up there, pulled right up to that point, guys. Second cast in there, I caught a two and three quarter pounder with two or three minutes left in the tournament. Went back over to the weigh-in, finished like 30th in the tournament, made a $10,000 check. That has happened to me countless amount of times. So the point of the matter is, is one of the most important things you can do in tournament fishing is never let your mind drift into a state of negativity. Always tell yourself the fish are always biting, I'm going to catch them. It's just a matter of time and play those mental games with yourself about picturing yourself catching what you need. Another mental game you play, if you, say for example, you pitch your jig out there, you're throwing your jig. Picture like if you were like inside of that jig and you're, and you know, you're bouncing along the bottom and all of a sudden you see this bass swim up to you and inhale you. Picture that, anticipate that strike, picture what it's going to feel like. It's like when you're working that jig, don't just like work it. It's like, while you're working, it's like mentally get into this picture. So like, I'm going to work it and I'm going to, this is what it's going to feel like when this fish hits it, I'm going to feel a tick on the line or I'm going to feel the, the line get mushy and the line's going to start swimming out. Picture what's that light, picture what that expectation is while you're working that bait. And if you discipline yourself to do that and it, and it will exhaust you, your guys, the amount of success you have, you're going to notice an incredible increase in that. Now, it doesn't work all the time. I'm not going to tell you it does work all the time. But for me, it has worked more often than not throughout the entire course of my career. That's just one part of it. So it's the same with anything, guys. The, the, the mental attitude that you have on anything has a big impact and no different than fishing. And finally, one final thing, guys, is you have to be disciplined. Discipline is discipline in fishing is like anything else in life. It's the most important aspect that's going to determine your success. <clears throat> if you're not disciplined to do the right thing and push yourself a little bit and, you know, do things that you may not want to do, but you need to do, if you discipline yourself to becoming a good angler, you're going to become a good angler. There's, there's no if and, the, and buts about it. So anyway, guys, that's just a few things off the top of my head. I got a bunch of other stuff out there, but it's just a few things I wanted to share with you guys. So I hope you can absorb it and use it in your own fishing, and we'll see you guys next week.